Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. It is Friday, day one of GearFest 2015, and a very special guest to stop by to see us, Steve Ferroni. Soggy, Steve Ferroni. Great to see you. <laughs> Good to it's be soggy, here. yeah, it's, it's uh, raining a little bit. We're, we've been out in, the, uh, out in the rain enjoying yeah. the moisture. Yeah. All right. We're glad you're here. Glad to be here. You're going to be playing and doing a workshop. That's and, uh, right. I'm going to be looking at some gear, too. Yeah, yeah looking at some, some great gear. So yeah. that's, that's wonderful. We're so glad you're here. Um, you've had an incredible career. Still having one. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Beginning yeah. with tap dancing at three years old. That's right. Yeah. They, Did you really start tap dancing at three yeah, years old? Yeah, they put me out there as soon as I could walk because I could. I was banging the spoon table, the high chair with the spoon mm -hmm. in time. And, in time, right. And they said, oh, well, we better make him do something. We better get him out there tap dancing. Wow. Yeah. How about that? And your grandmother. My grandmother, my grandmother, yeah, my grandmother was, she was like the main driving force behind it. And my, and my mother sort of tagged along. With right, it. right. And yeah. since then, so many great credits. Yeah. Eric Clapton, Duran Duran, Chaka Khan, Jeff yeah. Golub. Tom Petty, of course, for the yes. last 20 years or, yes, or so. It's yeah. an incredible career. One of the things that really stood out for me in your career has to be that you have to be one of the youngest people ever to open for The Who. Yeah, you know, I was, uh, I was 12 years old. I, oh, have incredible. I have a picture. I could show you a picture of that. I've got it on my phone now. Incredible. Somebody uh, sent me a picture of my, my, uh, my first band. Uh, we started off being called The Flames, and then we changed the name to The Web. Uh-huh. Which was kind of early. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we should have we should have, uh, should have trademarked that. Right? Yeah, we should trademark that. We would have made a fortune. <laughs> right. You know? And right. Um, uh, uh, so we became the web. It was a blues band from Brighton. I'm mm -hmm. in touch with a bunch of the guys from there still. Nice. And um, yeah, uh, yeah. Nice, nice. So some of your early bands then, Bloodstone, Oblivion Express. That's right. Yeah, Bl Oblivion Express was before Bloodstone. Was it? Was it before? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was a band before that called the Piranhas in France that I used to play with and. Uh, they they were instrumental in my musical education. They were right. they were educated musicians. Most of the other guys that I played with up up until that point were just people that used to play. They had mm -hmm. raw talent of playing. But then uh, uh, the the guys with the piranhas were, were, were studio musicians. Mm -hmm. They knew how to read, and that was made me think. Well, you know, if I'm going to do this professionally, there's some stuff. I, there's a lot of stuff I got to learn. So that I went to school. Uh, they they moved to, back to France to Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they asked me if I wanted to go, and I was like, can I get into the conservatory? Right. And they got me into the conservatory as a teacher. Because nice. I was, at 21, I was too old to be uh, 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 taken in as a student. It was a government plan thing. Okay. You had to, 15 was the eldest you could be to get in a percussion class. Mm -hmm. So, they, uh, so they, got me, they got me in there as a teacher because I knew how to play, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I got to teach these kids who knew what they were doing, and, and it got me to, I got to analyze what I was doing and how I was doing things. And, uh, and of course, I practiced my technique, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and these kids would help me. When I, when I would write out stuff for them, they would correct me. You know, so they really correct the teacher, so, so right. I learned a lot from them as well. They had fun a bit. I, I did three years down there. It was nice. fantastic. Nice. Yeah. So how did you make the connection with the average white band? Well, Robbie McIntosh, uh, when I lived in Italy, uh, I, I stayed in this Penzioni, uh, Penzioni Angela, which is right off of uh, Via Veneto. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a lot of musicians used to stay in this Penzioni. And uh, two of the musicians that stayed there was uh, Alex Lidgetwood and Robbie McIntosh. Okay. And Alex and Robbie um, uh, and myself and, and a, a guy named Calvin Bullen, who I've just recently got back in touch with, is nice. a guitarist in, a, in this band in, in Italy uh, with, with this guy, Ronnie Jones. We stayed in the same hotel, so we used to we used, we used to we sort of buddied up. That you know, mm -hmm. there was like the the two buddies were buddy buddied up with these other two buddies, and uh, we would go out and hit the clubs, and you know, we all liked the same sort of music and everything. Right. So, right. And so Robbie McIntosh was an old old friend of mine. From, okay. Uh, from uh, from being like seventeen years old, like seventeen when I was there, we mm -hmm. spent my eighteenth birthday in the Coliseum with a lot of cats. A lot of cats. <laughs> there was a lot of cats lived in the cold. I don't know if they're still there. I, mean, I think they're still around there. <laughs> like these wild cats are in there. So we were in there with like these big bottles of Chianti, you know, drinking drinking bottles of Chianti celebrating my birthday. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you were with them for nine albums? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. a tremendous, tremendous yeah. body of work. But yeah. obviously you didn't stop there. Six albums with Shaka Khan, including her debut. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, years with Eric Clapton. Yes, sir. Years with Duran Duran. Saturday Night Live. Saturday lots Night and Live, lots yeah. of uh, incredibly incredible uh, stellar stellar things there. One of the things that interested Steve Winwood, Steve Winwood, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, I was going to say one of the things that really interested me is how diverse your career has been. Because on one hand you have Eric Clapton, and then you have David Sanborn, right? And then you have Larry Coryell, yeah, and you have Keb Mo, right? And then you have Tom Petty, right? And you have Shaka Khan. That's right. As a drummer, how how difficult is it for you to be that diverse? Do you have to change your playing for each of those styles? I, I think everybody. 
every every artist uh, um, requires a certain amount of sensitivity to to his music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's certain law that passes through all music, right? And that is pocket, right? You know? Uh, if you're a pocket drummer, you can play pretty much anything. You know? mm -hmm. uh, 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 so um, I've been blessed with a with a, a talent for playing pocket that, uh, that sometimes I surprise myself with it because I, you know, uh, sometimes I, I have uh, you know maybe six weeks and I, I just I just don't do anything. I hang out with my grandkids and do, you know play with my family and uh, right and and then I say oh you're missing something oh I haven't played I haven't played in a while and then somebody <laughs> called up. And I'll have a session, and he's like, oh, maybe I should go practice. And, I'm like, okay. and, then, and then I just go in and sit down and start playing, and there it is, you know. Right. Uh, I don't warm up, and I'm not one of the person to sit there and, you know, warm up. I just sit down and start playing. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I rely on that pocket more than I do on anything else. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, so, right. So um, uh, uh, it, it, took, it took a little work to find it. Once you find that stuff, uh, you don't forget it. You know? Sure, yeah. sure. So you, you're... Uh, You've had the interesting uh, opportunity, I guess you would say, to go into a number of bands, Eric Clapton, Duran Duran, Tom Petty, and a, a number of uh, amazing artists that you've worked yeah. with who have a, a, a large body of work that you're then coming in and moving forward with them, but right. also playing the stuff that they've already established. Absolutely. Do you feel like you have to come in, say, when you're playing a Cream song, do you have to be Ginger Baker, or do you feel like oh, you no. should be, uh, be yourself playing, uh, <laughs> playing in that situation? Don't let me say anything bad about it. You know, I, 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 I would never. I would never. No, no, no. I, th I, I think that there's, there's, there's elements of things that they play uh, that, that you have to, that you have, that you have to remain faithful to, mm -hmm. because it's a body of work. It's a, it's a body of work that they've done. There's certain things that are written in stone. That, that you know, right. Uh, but that being said, I still try to find a way to make the thing my own. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that it's uh, that make it. Um, my my, this is my my contribution to it. Right. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. So again, looking at your body of work, there's a tremendous number of guitar players there. We mentioned Larry Coryell, uh, Eric Clapton, Jeff Gollum, I know. Pat Metheny. What is uh, that? Keb Mo. <laughs> on and on and on and on. All these all these amazing guitar players are very diverse. Again, do you have a connection with guitar players? Do you do you? Uh, I no. You hate, you hate guitar players. <laughs> if I never hear another I guitar, I try to avoid them like the plague. But I don't know what that's about. Maybe you know. Maybe I should start embracing them a little bit. You should bit. be advertising yourself. I'm the <laughs> guitar player's drummer. <laughs> I don't, yeah, there is, there's, there, is, there is a lot of that. I, I don't know. I have no idea why, why that happens. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I usually, when I do clinics and stuff, I think, uh, any drummers out there? And people below, Joe's below, and say, any, any bass players? And somebody, you know, any guitarists? And then see a couple of hands go, it's like, get him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe it's the way that I, way, the way that I play allows them some space to play because uh, I think that they, guitarists need space. Mm -hmm. I think most soloists, most soloists like to to have space. I mean, uh, I was told, Mike Brecker said uh, said to me once. Uh, um, you know, he said, you know, when you play, you leave a lot of space for us to play, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that's uh, maybe that's. Maybe that's what 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 works uh, uh, in, in my style. That there's there's this there's this hole that they can fill. That you know, there's not a drummer that's filling it all up with a lot of stuff. You know? Right, right, right. Although I remember reading uh, and uh, in, in hearing about when you were playing with Clapton that he had pretty specifically asked you to push him. Yes, but that's that you know that's firing someone off and then letting them go mm -hmm. is is different a thing. whole different thing from from like. Encouraging them all the way through their solo is that is <laughs> right, right. is is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, it would be a question of a, of just a, as you were playing something like here comes the solo, here comes his solo, just give him something to kick. It might just be like a, an accented downbeat or an accented uh, afterbeat that would that would just you know it's funny I, I was um I was talking to someone about that the other day it was uh, uh, um uh, my favorite drummer is Jack Dijonet. Mm -hmm. And Jack, Jack DeJohnet, I have nothing to do with his style. Nothing to do with his style. Right. At all. The, the music that he plays, I, I don't play. I, I watch that stuff and it's like, oh my God. But the way he goes about setting people up and the way his sensitivity to what other people are playing, mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I get from him. And, and, and I was playing, playing with, the, um, with, the, with his, uh, his uh, godson in Italy. And, and, and we, 
you know, I, and I was talking about that. You know, people don't really, when I say Jack the Giant's my favourite drummer, they don't really see that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, uh, we were playing with Pino Daniele and it came to this thing where there was this bass solo and it up came this bass solo and I just played this thing to kick off his bass solo. And he said to me afterwards, he said, what was that that you played at the beginning of my solo? Man, that just, that just shot me off. That got me going. And I said, right. that's what I get from your Godfather. You know, I, I, really, I really love to be able to do that, to encourage someone to play. But I think that people, a lot of young drummers, Especially nowadays, I'm hearing a lot of drummers, they call this church drumming. They call it church drumming. Where they just play this clatter all the time. They have these, they have these amazingly complicated fills that they've worked out and, it's like they, and then they have to play them. And it always sounds to me that they're filling up too much, too much of the space in it. It's not about the drummer, it's about whoever's there in front. It's about the vocal, it's about the, you know. Um, it's kind of like, you know, a, uh, you know, th these guitarists that I work with, they also sing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, w when when you uh, when you when when you see me sitting back there playing and you see me singing along, I'm not doing just a sing along. I'm singing because I want to make sure that there's space in the tempo, in the, the tempo is in a place that the vocalist has the breath to, to 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 sing, has that he has the time to get the lyric over. Right. You know, it, uh, uh, and so. There's a lot more to it than just saying, singing, singing along. It's really thinking about like, uh, am I taking this breath? Am I, is, is this coming a little bit too fast for me? And, and making the adjustments so that, that he has the space to sing. It's not about whether I'm playing like some fancy fill or anything. I just got to sit there and propel that song along. Right. You know? So it, it's, um, uh, I don't know. Um, I've, I've seen a quote from you where you said that I play the song, I'm not drumming. No. You said, I'm playing the song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah which the song is, is an important thing. Which is, which is great. Express, yeah. Yeah. So more than 20 years now with Tom Petty. How yeah, did, how it'd, be 23, it'd be 23 years in October. Incredible, that's yeah. great. That's I started great. recording Wildflowers 23 years ago. Wow, so how did that come about? How did you uh, make that connection? Well, you know, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a, uh, I, I believe that, that Tom had been talking with George Harrison. And, mm -hmm. and I've worked with George and... and another and, guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> another guitarist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, and George George had uh, I think George had recommended me. He said, "Why don't you, you know I had this guy out with me that was playing. We used to play with Eric." Uh, um, but I, I was in New York. I was doing studio work in New York, and I got mm -hmm. this phone call from one of these people that uh, books that books uh, studio musicians. Mm -hmm. and Steve, can you be in Los Angeles uh, in a week? Yeah, he looked at the book. Yeah, sure, I got time to do that. And uh, and. Uh, and and uh, I said, well, who's it for? And they said, well, it's top secret. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, all right. So then uh, I go out and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, they put me in the Sportsman's Lodge Hotel, and I'd you know, never seen that hotel before. I was like, oh, what is this thing is for? This is uh, just a little hotel in the in the valley. Uh -huh. And I go out to this studio that I'd never been to before, uh, um, and um, uh, Sound City. Mm -hmm. And I walk in there, and there's Tom Petty and Mike Campbell. And I've met Mike Campbell before, um, with playing with George. Okay. Because so, uh, 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 when we did the we did the tour in Japan with Eric Clapton, and Eric 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 didn't come and play in, in at the at the Albert Hall with George. So Mike Campbell came in and did that. Okay. You know, and um, Nathan East had played bass in Japan. He was busy at that. I think he'd gone out with the, he was out on the road with Phil Collins. I think at the time. <clears throat> and Will Lee, George, George was so nice. George said, "You know, who's the bass player that you like playing with?" And Will Lee is such a Beatles fan. Right. I I, I called Will and I said, "Hey, Will, you know, you want to come play with George Harrison?" And, that, and then I became <laughs> Will's best friend. I still am. <laughs> 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 to nice. this day, I'm still his best friend because of that call. You know, That's and, awesome. Uh, and um, anyway, so so uh, we we had we had a. We, we had just had a great time playing, playing together. And I, and I guess may, maybe that might have been something like, that Mike has said, oh, yeah, I know that guy playing with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with George. Right. And, right. Well, that worked out great. It worked out pretty good. It's yeah. been, a, been a long time. You know? yeah. It was a, wonderful. One little gig that turned into years of, uh, yeah, years of service. Know, right? It's, a, it's yeah. been fun. It's, it continues to be fun with the Heartbreakers. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us about the drums you play. Gretsch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I start, uh, I, when I started playing drums, People said to me, um, uh, you know, I, I said, what are the best, what are the best drums that are out there, you know? And and they, a lot of people said to me, you know, Gretsch drums, Ludwig. A lot of people, you know, Ringo Starr was playing Ludwig back in those days, you know. But they said, you know, Gretsch, 
Gretchen, Gretchen's really got this uh, this thing, you know. Uh huh. So I always wanted to get one, but it was always sort of out of my range, you know. And right. then um, uh, when I started playing with Average White Band, you know, I had the funds to do that, so I mm -hmm. got I got me a Gretsch. Nice, <laughs> nice, and played them ever since. And well, and I played them for a long time, and I had I had a. This is back before endorsements really sort of were endorsements. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and Gretsch at one time were were, were uh, distributed by by Wurlitzer, uh, and uh, I used to go to Ohio, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and so they had this big this big monolithic building that they were in there. And then they got sold to someone else, and then and then uh, and this was at the point where people had been starting to, the endorsement thing had started happening. And I knew like a bunch of guys in New York that you know they said, well, you know. Yamaha gave me like 15 drum kits, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so I said, I said to the guys at Gretsch that I wanted to work with them a little bit more on, on, on doing something a bit different with the with the drums, and uh, and uh, they said, okay, well, we'll send you a new endorsement agreement, agreement, which actually turned out to be worse than the one that I had at the hmm. time. And so um, I called up Jeff Beccaro and I said to him, I said, man, I, said, Jeff, I don't know what to do about this. I mean, these drums, are, I don't know what to do about it. And he said, yeah, he said, I'll tell you what, Use your Gretches for recording, and, and and I'll hook you up with Paul. And they hooked me up with Paul, and they make really, really great drums too. And sure. and, and I stay, I stay, they had, and they had great service. And they, you know, and um, you know, Mike Farris is still a friend of mine. And, and uh, but they they, uh, they 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 supplied my stuff for all over the world for for, for years. And mm -hmm. then I started to work with Tom, and started to work less overseas, and 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 stay more here in the, here in the states. And and uh, they bought me a Gretsch kit to 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 play on uh, on Wildflowers, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I started to think. Oh, you know, I started asking myself, what do I really want to play? What 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 drums do I really want to play? And 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 you know, uh, as luck would have it, I kept running into Dinah, uh, ran into ran into Dinah Gretsch at the uh, at the Nam show, and one day I said, you know, I got I want to get one of those little jazz kits and. And as the show was closing, I was walking past the booth and Diana said, hey, you know, come up here. Give, what, do you, what is it that you want to get? And I said, well, I want to get a little birch kit like that one down there, a little birch kit, a little jazz kit. Mm -hmm. She said, she said uh, do you want that one? And I thought, you know, and, you know I kind of with Paul. And she said, I know, I know that. Any drummer worth his salt owns a Gretsch drum kit. So we want you to have one. So take that one. So I walked out of the NAMM show carrying <laughs> nice. that little 18-inch <laughs> bass drum. You know. Right. Carried it out of there, like, and I took it back home and I set it up and I played it and I played it and I just love playing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's so easy to play, you know. And I had to ask myself the question of like, you know, do what do I want to play? Right. And so I, 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 uh, I, I, mean, I took a Fred and Dinah to to dinner. They came and saw the band, uh, the Heartbreakers in New York. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I said, well, how about putting, um, you know, your logo on the Heartbreakers logo. What do you think about that? And they were thrilled about it. Sure. Because we had a, we had a, we had an ongoing relationship anyway, so as a, mm -hmm. as a friendship. Right. And uh, and you know they were concerned about why I left in the first place too. They actually they actually asked me that all those years later. Right. You know, because they bought the company back. And so uh, yeah, so I I, I, I went back uh, I went back to Gretsch Drums, and uh, nice. I'm really happy with that. I've been really happy with Sabian Symbols. I think I'm the second longest endorsee of. Uh, of Sabian symbols and uh, you know I I, um, I went to see uh, Lionel Richie and uh, oh god who was um, Jerry Brown was playing drums with him mm -hmm. and I uh, and I used to play Kay Zildjian's and Arif Martin when he went to vacation in, in Turkey he would grab a bunch and put them in a container and send me back a, a bunch of Kay Zildjian's you know and I just uh, paid him for that and, uh, and he, he just a lovely man nice uh, and uh, and um, and so but Case is soft and they crack, and um, I, I still got like a load of them at home, and, I, and I'm using them in the studio every once in a while when something calls for that sort of sound. Mm -hmm. But I was looking for something that was a bit more modern, something that was a, a and I, I wasn't very thrilled with the, with the with when they moved Case to Canada. I wasn't really feel, thrilled with the with the sound of them, and so um, I went went to Radio City and saw Lionel Richie and Jerry Brown were sitting up there playing. And I thought, dang, those cymbals sound really good, you know. And so I went around backstage and I said, hey, Jerry, what was that? what's those symbols that you're using? He said, save me. And so um, I called them up and uh, they, they were thrilled to, right. the, to, to be my, uh, my spon spon sponsor. And uh, 
So I've been with them uh, a long time now. Right. That was a yeah. long time. That was a long time right. ago. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. Nice to have long relationships. And, and yeah, still pro mark drumsticks. I mean, I'm uh, pretty much a creature of habit. I don't, I don't move around a lot. Right. Uh, when it works, and, it works. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, very good. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, we're so happy you're here. Oh yeah, we're looking I gotta say, I, I just switched to DW. I gotta just switched yeah. to DW hardware because their hardware is just killer. Incredible like, stuff, isn't they're it? Incredible, yeah. incredible, absolutely, and, and uh, thoughtful, well thought out. And uh, you know, and they got these super light stands now that I use for for little gigs, my little around town gigs, which basically my son does that for me. So it made my son happy. I bet it did, yeah. You know, kids, <laughs> lazy, don't want to carry anything heavy. No, of course not. I used to beat him every day, too. You yeah, know, just look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve, thanks for being here. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure to have uh, you. It's been a great pleasure being here at Sweet And uh, we're, we're looking forward to the uh, workshop this afternoon to, to yeah. learn and everything from you. You know, I got to, I, I, I buy stuff from Sweetwater. Oh, thank I, you. Have a, I, have a, I have a I have a connection here, uh, um, uh, a guy that's uh, from, from uh, uh, Steve Winstead, that's uh, Mike Campbell's guitar tech. When I wanted to get something, once he said, "Oh, get in touch with this guy Richard at, 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 uh, at Sweetwater," so I, I went onto the site and I knew nothing about it. And I'm like, "Wow, they got all this stuff!" And I'm buying all my studio mics. Oh, great! And uh, and I was walking through the hall coming here just now, and I ran into my guy, and I never met him there before. Richard he came up and introduced himself. Oh, that's said, oh, great! Richard, Steve, Chino, Winstead. Oh, oh my God, yeah, so I met you at last. So that's great. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Well, again, thanks for coming in. We're just so Thank glad you. you're here. Thank been you. a real pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. Yeah, it was a long minute. <laughs>